Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're taking a look at the HG160 scale Arm Slave MD9 Falk version IV from Bandai's Full Metal Panic Invisible Victory line. And it's pretty awesome. If you guys have seen my past reviews on the Arbalest and the Gernsback and the Levitin, well, this is going to be very similar to that. So you kind of should have an idea of what to expect from this. This is technically an HG from Bandai, but it is very nice. It's definitely a high-end HG, something you would think about more closer to some of the really nice HGs that we've got out recently, where it has a lot of really nice detail, very, very nice construction, and very little in the way of seam lines. So a lot of the things that we typically sort of think of as the negative points of an HG, they aren't really too much of an issue in this case. It doesn't have a full inner frame, and it does have a few stickers on there, but it is a very, very nice HG. Now, these are going to be a little bit more expensive, too. The Invisible Victory Full Metal Panic line of kits from Bandai are definitely a little bit more expensive than your standard HG, so that is something to consider as well. They are slightly larger, but overall they're really, really nice kits, I have to say, especially if you're a fan of the design, if you're a fan of the series, they're definitely worth picking up one or two, or, you know, collecting a bunch of them if you want, but they are going to be a little bit pricey. Now, all right, let's get into talking about everything that's included with this kit, which is pretty substantial. There's a lot you get with this. Before that, though, as always, a huge thank you to SA Gundam Store for sponsoring the review. Do check the link to their site down below. Below. You can check out all the kits and everything there on their site and save 10% off with my coupon code there's Aquarius 10 So check that out if you guys haven't yet now first thing. Let's talk about the hand options We have this nice set of open hands both left and right and then we also have a set of holding hands Which are kind of okay They're not really the best looking and it really would have been nice if they would have also given us a set of closed fists for the again the premium price you're paying for these kits just having these two sets of hands is okay, but a couple other different options maybe would have been nice. Now going through all the weapons, let's start off with the weapons that are not new, not specific for this particular kit. So here is the monomolecular cutter, it's just a knife here that goes into its sheath like that. It has a peg here on the side, you can plug onto the side of the leg there, so that works on there like that. You can also, if you want, plug it onto the back side here. And the other cool thing about these is that it uses the same size 3mm peg that is used by a lot of Bandai high grades, including like all the Iron Blood Orphans kits and everything like that, and a lot of Kotobukiya kits as well. So any of these weapon option parts that you don't use with this kit, you can have them as extra weapon options for a lot of different other kits. And next we have the 40mm rifle, which is pretty cool, just a simple rifle design here like that. It's pretty simple in its construction too, basically two pieces sandwiched together. One piece there for the barrel. And you do also have this extra connection part here, which you can use to clip onto that like that. And then here on the back skirt, you can remove this little tab here on his butt flap. I always find this part kind of hard to get off, so just be a little bit careful with it. Or if you don't plan on using it, then just don't put it on in the first place. There we go. So that just plugs onto there like that. So you can store that on his back skirt area like so. Aha, and also forgot to mention that you have another holder here for the back skirt for the monomolecular cutter. So if you don't want to plug that onto his backpack or the side of his waist, you can plug that onto here and just hold that on the back skirt like so as well. Then we have the battle rifle, which is pretty cool as this is using some different parts in different versions of the kit. So this is just kind of like the main form of this, but this can be broken down. You can remove this part on the top and then this part here from the front and make this more kind of SMG looking sort of weapon like that, which is pretty cool or have it just like that, or with the top part included on there like that, so you have some different options for that. And as you can see, we have a point here where you can plug on other stuff onto that if you wanted to. So let's get into the new weapons specifically for this kit, and here we have, I guess, what would be kind of his signature weapon is the Crimson Edge Monomolecular Cutter. So similar, I guess, in terms of its usability or in terms of what it does as the regular monomolecular cutter, this one is just a different shape, obviously. So it has this really cool look handle on it and then this hooked blade style for that. And this one, again, just fits into there and has a peg here on the left and the right side, so you can plug this onto either side. And you actually have two of these, so you can plug them onto the left and the right side if you want, or onto the back, like so, or a bunch of different ways you can plug these onto there. They do have a hollow space here, unfortunately, but that means, though, that this whole knife blade and handle piece is just all one piece molded together like that, which is nice because you don't have to worry about a seam line or anything, but you do have that hollow gap in there, unfortunately. And then the other new weapon for this here is the Heat Lance. So this one is also really cool. And here at the end, the Heat Round, which is a, a removable little just kind of piece of ammunition there at the end, I guess. But otherwise, obviously, this is just handheld. And this one as well also has a male adapter and a female adapter point there on these. So you could have the two of them, which we do have two of these, mounted onto the left and the right side, but the handles will be backwards like that as they're facing the opposite way. You could also, if you really wanted to get crazy, 
mount them together like that to make a double heat lance, which is pretty cool. But anyway, I really like the design of this, and it's really kind of unique, interesting weapon. Really reminds me, obviously, of something we we might see from Arm Loader Orphans. Definitely has that sort of feeling, but it's a pretty cool weapon and pretty long. It's taller than the Falk itself, so it makes for a pretty nice, unique weapon. Now, me personally, not really a big fan of these new knives, but I do really like the new heat lances, so these are really nice in terms of the weapons for this. I won't go through the entire articulation because it's basically the same as the other kits. So if you are interested in seeing a full breakdown of the articulation of this kit, just check out one of my reviews of the Arbalest or the Gernsback. I went through all of that in detail. But overall, the articulation is really nice and has some cool gimmicks in there with it. You'll see it in some action poses here in a moment. But I just do want to point out where the stickers are on this kit. We have one sticker part here on the front of the crotch there. One sticker for the eyes, of course, and then stickers here on the back of the leg. This part here down the center of the back of the leg is all just one piece of dark plastic, but it's supposed to be with a little bit of that light purple and a little bit of gray color here on the back, so it's just made up with that sticker there. But with it being a part here on the back of the leg, not really all that noticeable. I think you could probably just pretty much omit that and it wouldn't really change the look of the design all that much. And the same thing for this one here at the front of the crotch. It's a very small change of color that I don't think is really going to make or break the design too much if you just want to omit that. And then for a size comparison, here it is compared with the Gernsback as well as the HD RX-782 Gundam. So obviously, as you can see, it's going to be a little bit larger than your standard HD 144 scale Gundam. But I just wanted to give you guys a comparison with the Gernsback here as well, just because before getting the Falk, I was thinking like, eh, it doesn't really have really all that much difference. Basically, a new head, the shoulders are a little bit different, and obviously the new colors and the new weapons. But there is actually quite a bit different to the design that I didn't really notice all that much first before I got it. So I just want to make sure I pointed out to to you guys that the thighs the legs the upper like middle section of the legs is all completely different as well the upper arms and the shoulders also obviously all completely different there also and then if I turn them around there for you guys as well you can see the back of the elbow is also a little bit different on that one as well so there is actually a good amount of brand new parts included with this kit and so with that, guys, we'll just finish out the review by me giving you a bunch of different action poses here, trying to show off all of the different weapon options you have with this. But that is definitely one of the plus sides of this kit, is all the different weapon options. Now, like I said, you can use a lot of these with the kit, but you're, whatever you end up using, you're going to have leftovers that you could use with other different Gundam kits or different other kits from, you know, whatever. You have a lot of leftover weapons with these and a lot of options, and they're all compatible between each other. So if you have a few different other kits from the line, the Arbalest, or the Gernsback, or the Levitine, or whatever. All the weapons are interchangeable, so say if you want a different uh, weapon from a different kit, you can always just mix and match those and make some different cool custom units and everything. So a lot of really great options to enjoy in terms of just the weapons of these. But as for just the kits themselves, fantastic. Very minimal in the way of stickers, mostly in all the right colors. That's, that is to say this kit and the Gernsback as well are pretty plain in their color scheme. This is pretty much just like a dark navy blue. You have a couple different tones there, which does look nice. It has a very similar feel to like the Jesta, I feel like, in terms of its color scheme. And well, the Gernsback as well, also just very kind of gray, but they do have that kind of special look to them where the Gernsback has a really grunty look to it. This one definitely has that more kind of specialty grunt to it. Again, sort of similar to the Jesta. And also the kit, just the details on it, really nice, lots of details around on this on the outside surface. Underneath, it has a lot of really nice construction in just the way that the kit goes together. The construction of that and the articulation of everything is also really good. You can get plenty of dynamic poses out of these kits, so posing them is really fun and easy to do as well. So in a nutshell, while you might find them a little bit expensive, you definitely get a lot of playability out of them, a lot of different stuff that you can do with these. Or even if you don't want to, you know, mess with tons of different weapon options or posing or everything like that, you just want it to just stand there and look cool, it's going to be really good for that as well. The only thing that I think that I'm left for wanting is some closed fists. I think some nice, a nice set of closed fists for this kit would be really appreciated. But that said, you could always turn to some Bandai option parts for that, or even non-Bandai option parts. Parts. There's plenty of different options that you could go with if you were really set on wanting a set of closed fists for this But it's just a shame that they weren't included with the box I think just including a couple extra more pieces in the box really wouldn't have been that difficult for Bandai But hey, we can't always get everything that we want. This is still totally worth the price in my opinion So if you guys do still have any other further questions or comments do feel free to leave those down below Is there anything else you would have liked to see included with this or it does this come with everything that you guys think it should come with and have you picked it up for yourself? Do you want to pick it up? What do you think about the kits so far? What do you think about the line in general so far? Are you guys enjoying the line? Do you have any predictions as to what more kits we might see from the Full Metal Panic line from Bandai? 
I have still never seen this series, so I don't know about any other designs, you know, I don't know how many other or whatever designs also exist. I do believe the Belial is also from the same series, right? I reviewed the Kotobukiya version of that, but if that is in fact from the same series, it would be cool, I think, to see Bandai's take on that design as well. While the Kotobukiya version was nice and very sharp and pointy, I feel like Bandai's would probably just be a little bit more solid. You'd be able to do a little bit more with it in terms of the articulation of it, as the Kotobukiya version was not very nicely articulated, I would say. But anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.